First of all, just want to say thank you to each and every one of you. Uh, it's truly my joy to come here in Tungling, you know. It's, a, you know, pressing a pause button in my life. You know, I was having this one-to-one uh, -one chat with uh, Dean yes, uh, last week. And I believe that uh, after my three months over, I will also need to press another pause button to reflect on <laughs> what has been taught as well. Because to myself, uh, I'm a pretty slow learner, all right? So uh, I, if you want to take a walk with me in the park, you better think twice, uh, okay? You know where I walk uh, and, and, and things like that. So yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's good to just uh, begin with a word of prayer, all right? Dear God, we just want to thank you that you are truly a wonderful God. Yes. A God who is fully dependable and faithful. Yes. We praise you, Lord. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Alright. Okay. The first thing I'll let John know is that, uh, yeah, I think uh, this is a wonderful uh, uh, stuff that we need to remind ourselves always you know that we have a big god Amen. all right which means that whatever challenge that you go through you tell yourself don't tell god how great your problem is but tell your problem how great our god is Amen. the first uh, week of the lesson that we have in Tunling. <coughs> sorry my voice is not percent yet uh, was that uh, we always pray to God as priest but God is also our king I mean we are kings as well so we have the authority in Christ so we have the ability and the capacity to also speak to our mountains speak to our problems and uh, sometimes we are so weak in in that so I just want us to have the uh, capability and the capacity to do that. And this is a wonderful, uh, great assurance to me because it reminds me that we have a big God. Yeah. A God who is faithful and trustworthy. Yeah. Uh, I'm also also can be quite emotional person okay so sometimes if I uh, uh, I won't break down in front of you all <laughs> but, but sometimes <coughs> uh, you know uh, uh, if you have uh, eyes that can see through my body praise God that you all don't have huh? <laughs> I'm actually not living with my own liver, okay? Um, just want to let you know that for nine and a half years already, okay, uh, I'm actually living with my friend's liver, 65%. So uh, nine and a half years ago, when uh, the doctors told me that uh, I had uh, liver failure, 100% liver failure, I was totally shocked. Yeah, I was uh, telling myself that uh, how can, you know, all the how can, uh, you know, how can this happen to me? I've been a faithful Christian for so long, you know, I've been serving the church, uh, I've been all these things, like, you know, all the how can, how, how can, all these kind of things. Uh, and then, uh, there was shock that came into my life like, and I have to accept that you know to have because I, I, I remember the surgeon telling me that about I think February 2014 the surgeon was telling me that uh, without a liver transplant I would in three months time I would die like. okay so that was very urgent so there were two kinds of possibilities that the, that the surgeon gave me. You know. One was cavadaric, uh, that means anyone died 
then you got to rush the person to the hospital, take up the liver, then you also got to rush to the hospital. So I got my phone with me, 247. The other one is of course, liver donation. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for one week, it was full of anxiety because I have to wait. You know. Then uh, later on, there was this person, actually <laughs> my colleague, who, who, who donated his liver to me. Yeah. Uh, he was not supposed to be known, uh, but he came with a liver donation booklet. And what a, what a clue to you. Uh, yeah, of course, I know who. I know you are. I know. But nonetheless, even if you want to give, you have to do all kinds of assessment and checks, make sure these things, the blood groups can match and, and, and things like that. Uh, but I must tell you that there is a sense of hopelessness within me yeah. during that time, you know, in the hospital. Uh, I remember that, uh, you know, the longest stay in the hospital was 40 days wow. that I checked in. Not in the hotel, but in the hospital. <laughs> it's different treatment and, and things like that. Uh, I, I found that my uh, hopelessness turned to hope when God, you know, made Himself known to me, Amen. and I praise God for that, for yes. friends, for encouragement, and things like that. I, I show you a picture of, uh, you know, uh, this is a picture of me after my liver transplant. All right, outside you see some tubes. I mean, there, there were worse pictures, but I, I, I just took up this one now, okay? But inside there is a, a joyful heart, a peaceful heart inside because the, the operation was over. I got a new lease of life and I praise God for that. So every time I praise God and worship God with a new heart, I feel so much enjoyable. enjoyable. And some of my friends were telling me that they, hey, God gave you a new purpose, uh, make sure you uh, take advantage of it. Okay, but I know that this, uh, this, this, this miracle wouldn't have happened if not also for this particular uh, verse, alright? Uh, because I know that um, during that time, alright, the church was also praying for me and giving me practical helps and, and things like that. It was a combined effort, a combined faith. I know that during the hospital, I was praying that God, please help me, please heal me. Uh, I want to look forward to your hope and to your care, you know. But somehow, God did not answer. So I became, you know, doubting, you know, this kind of things. Uh, but then I just continue to just pray that God somehow you will pull through for me. So when I came across this particular verse, which I've read many times, all right, it says here, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Uh, if you were to pay carefully, pay careful attention to the verse, it says here, when Jesus saw their faith, he did not say his faith is their faith. You know, and some of us may have been quite uh, familiar with the story of uh, the crowded house and then uh, the Jesus, uh, I mean the parenthetic friends want, want to go to the house but could not make it into the house. So they dug a roof above the, the, the house and then they lowered the paralytic. And then this verse uh, came about. Just want to let you all know that uh, sometimes me, like a paralytic uh, person, may be feeling helpless and hopeless. But it's okay to just depend upon your friends. Simple prayer requests. Yeah. Let them, I mean, pour into their faith. Let them pray and bring it before God. You know, we have sung the song, right? Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Maybe it's just a little bit more. Let your friends top it up for you. 
took the faith for you, you know? And that what, that's what cell groups are for. We have cell groups in Tunling, cell groups at, uh, in your own church, your friends, and things like that. I mean, this is what care is about. So I, I, I hope that you will take this part uh, seriously, because it is no Christian or nobody should live alone. We are apart, not apart. Get it? <laughs> okay. Okay. If you look at this picture, what do you see? It's a mess, all right. But actually, it is the back of a cross stitch. If you have done cross stitch before, lah. Okay. Our life sometimes can be full of mess, all right. We just don't know where it is and, and things like that. But if you turn the back of the picture, what do you see? A beautiful cross stitch. All right? And sometimes our life is like that. We may not be able to understand the mess that is happening in our lives. But don't despair. Because you trust God, God will help you become a beautiful picture. You are fearfully and wonderfully made in God's eyes. All right? I just also want to tell you about this little picture that I have uh, uh, shown you here. Is that uh, God sometimes enables us to walk through the challenges of life. Uh, sometimes our prayer is, God, can you just help me to go uh, remove this trial, you know, from me and things like. Uh, you know, Daniel and the uh, uh, I mean, these three friends of Daniel did, uh, was praying, even if, I think the point is that uh, God sometimes can deliver us from the fire, but also don't exclude that God can deliver us through the fire. Yeah. All right. So sometimes, like for my case, I, I can also say, I, I had prayed before, you know, that uh, if I don't need to go through the liver transplant, somehow a miracle can happen, uh, be such a great, I can testify to your name, and, <clears throat> and goodness and all that. Don't have, have to go through the process and things like that. I heard so many wonderful testimonies of yours as well, and it has stirred me as well. So, remember this, you know, um, why it happened to me this way or why it happened to you that way, I don't know. I think the important thing is that we just need to trust God. Sometimes we just want to uh, ask God for an answer. What if God does not give you an answer that satisfies you? What if God does not give you an answer that you don't accept? Do you still trust God? Do you still love God? I think the answer, the response is the answer in your heart. Alright? I come across this uh, uh, poster, alright, that says that, Man says, show me and I'll trust you. Alright? God says, trust me, and I'll show you. All right? I learned a beautiful hymn when I was a, a young boy. It says, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. All right, thank you. Liver reminds me of uh, uh, Red Hot Monkey used to preach, you know, he shouts, you know, you've got a liver problem, Jesus can deliver! Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, 